All right, Philippe, thank you so much for joining us, talking a little bit about the 2020 NBA draft. You've kind of taken a different approach to the draft this year. And with everything going on, you were at Gonzaga and now have signed overseas. How have things been for you the last few months in terms of your basketball journey? Yeah, well, a lot of tough decisions for sure, especially in, in these tough times, you know, when all these deadlines we have to follow. Uh, it's been tough, but I think I found – uh, I found my path. I found the, the way I'm going to approach this draft process and uh, whatever comes next. And uh, it's been good. I'm, I'm, I'm back home now with my new team mm-hmm. uh, starting the league. So everything's fine right now. So you did play two years at Gonzaga. Just had a very big year with the Bulldogs. Jumped from six to 17 points per game, eight rebounds. You're an All-American. You were West Coast Conference Player of the Year. What was the, kind of the key for you in taking advantage of the bigger opportunity you had this year? Yeah, well, it was, it was huge, you know. Uh, but I think uh, the thing I took most advantage of was my first year, just being able to be on the same team as uh, some of the current NBA players like Brandon Clark, Rui Hachimura, even Killian Tilly, who's going to be a pro as well. So uh, just being able to go against those guys every single day every single practice and it's got me so much better. I think it was just a huge jump from, you know, high school basketball to the college level and such an elite team that I was, I was with the first year. Uh, and I just got so much better with those guys that year and with Gonzaga's program and their, mm-hmm. their development, which they're really known for. And uh, I think once I got the opportunity, it was on me to put, put all that work from the, you know, kind of like, from the dark, from the, you know, all those extra practices and all those closed practices, just put that on the court. And uh, I think I did it well. I think I did my job there. And, uh, you know, the results and the, the recognitions came by, by themselves. You just played your first, I looked up, you just played your first game the other day in the Adriatic League with Mega Bimox. What was it like kind of making your debut as a pro in your home country of Serbia? Yeah, well, it was whew, it was uh, it was different. Definitely a lot of emotions. I'm glad I got p- past that first game. I think it's gonna be only better from here. But uh, it, w- it was you know emotional. I'm I'm happy that I'm back, and you know that was my first professional game actually, playing against you know real pros. So uh, uh, like I said, a lot of emotions. But I'm I'm happy uh, where I'm at. I'm really happy to play with the with the team I'm with right now, which is. It's really unique because uh, everybody except two players are 21 or younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just a fun, fun environment to be around and a fun team to play with, for sure. So growing up in Serbia, you played for a lot of very prominent youth programs, Partizan, plays like that. And you played high school in the United States, obviously went to Gonzaga. Now you're back in Serbia. What has that sort of – you've had a lot of different experiences. How do you think you've been a basketball player? As a basketball player, well – I just think I was able to take the best from every every environment, every situation, because obviously those are all different cultures, different basketball cultures, different styles of play. Uh, so everywhere I've been, I try to fit in, and then uh, when I leave, I would try to to take uh, you know something with me, take what's best, and try to use it. For example, playing college basketball, which is crazy fast, and high school as well you know, athletic and uh, when you when you go back to Europe and play kind of slower, kind of more, you know, patient uh, with more plays, I would just try to uh, just, you know, take things uh, from college, uh, just be more aggressive, be more athletic uh, and try to use, you know, some different things that would help me be successful in, uh, in every different level. So that's, that's probably the biggest advantage. I've seen everything and uh, I know what to expect. So because your path is a little bit different and obviously with everything going on with the plan B, if you do end up getting drafted, would it be to stay over in Serbia and then come over when kind of in a, the draft and stash? Or have you thought about what your plans would be or you're kind of just focusing on right now? Uh, I mean, I'm going to do whatever is best for me and whatever, you know, the team that drafts me uh, has in store or has planned for me. Uh, I really have no preference preferences. You know, my, my end goal is to be an NBA player, so I'm just going to do everything it takes to get there. And wrapping up, looking at this Charlotte Hornets franchise, 
going through a developmental route right now. A lot of young guys, a lot of second year, third year rookie players last year. How do you see your game potentially fitting in with this organization? Yeah, I, I see it fitting really well. Like you said, a lot of young players, a lot of uh, same age group players, I would say. And uh, that's always fun too. You know, it's it's fun environment to be around. Uh, the chemistry is definitely going to be there. And uh, it's... Uh, I, I like playing, uh, you know, with young teams because there's always that that grit, that mentality that you need to have in order to compete, and you always want to prove everybody that you can play with the, you know, the big leagues, the the older guys, the veterans. Uh, so you know, just using that as a motivation, I think I would fit in really well together with, you know, uh, my style and everything.